All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to make an animated toggle button with just HTML and CSS. So something pretty simple yet, I think that is actually a really cool implementation that you can use on a form or you can use as a little toggle switch or you know, as many cases where you can go ahead and use this instead of just using a generic checkbox that you know checks on and then checks off. So this is a little bit of an upgrade from that. So let me show you how this works. So when you click on the button here, it's going to slide over to the right, it's going to do that with a very smooth transition and then the color of the actual circle here is going to change and then we can go ahead and revert this and it's going to slide back smoothly once again and revert back to the original color all right so that's what we're going to be building here so let's go ahead and get started so here in VS Code, all we're gonna need to go ahead and complete our button is going to be an HTML file and then also our style sheet here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this Explorer up to save some space. Now to start off here, let's go ahead and create our boilerplate. So I'm gonna do that with Emmet and then we'll give this a title here. We'll say animated toggle button and I am using a uh, live server here. So once I refresh this, you should see that it's gonna change right there and now every change you make from here on out should go ahead and be seen here on our browser, okay? And then we need to link up our style sheet here. So we're gonna do link and then we're gonna say our style.css. Now, for the markup for this, we only need one thing, which is gonna be our input. Now, the type we wanna go ahead and use is a checkbox here, okay? So if we save that, you'll see we'll have this input with a checkbox up in the top left-hand corner, all right? So that's all we need to go ahead and do for our HTML here, so let's begin with our styling. So to start off here, I wanna go ahead and do a simple reset. So we're gonna say margin zero, padding zero, and we'll say box sizing and set that to border box here. All right, and then I want to center our checkbox in the middle of our screen just to go ahead and make it easier to see for this demo. So to do that, I'm gonna go and target our body here and we'll simply say display as flex and to push everything into the center, we're gonna say justify content center, align items center, and to actually get it into the center uh, vertically here, we need to actually pass it a height value of 100 VH and that's gonna go ahead and center into the middle of the page here. Now to make our button stand out a little bit for this demo, I wanna go ahead and pass it a background color here. We're gonna say RGB, and we're gonna use 171, 171, 171, which is a nice gray, okay? So let's get on to actually making our button here. So there's a few ways we can go ahead and target our styling here. The way I'm gonna go ahead and do it is by saying input, and we're gonna say type, and then we're gonna target the checkbox, okay? Now you could go ahead and apply a class to, if that can go away, to your input here if you have many inputs, but since we only have one, I could technically just go ahead and target our input tag here, but I wanna show you how you can specifically target an actual input by using this type value right here, okay? So the first thing that we wanna go ahead and do here is we want to target a property called WebKit Appearance. Now we wanna go ahead and set this to none and what it's gonna do is get rid of the normal appearance of the checkbox here, okay? And then I want to set the position of this to relative. And then what I wanna go ahead and do is give it a background color and we're gonna say F1, F1, F1 here, okay? Now we haven't defined a width or height yet so you're not gonna see it. So for this demo and for the purpose of showing you this, I went ahead and increased the width and height probably a little bit larger than you would like to use in you know a real case scenario of implementing this. But you can go ahead and mess with the numbers any way you want. But for this demo, I went ahead and made it a little bit larger so you can see. So I gave it a width of 120 pixels and then I gave it a height of 40 here. So that's what it's gonna look like right here. Okay, now we, we don't want it to have these uh, square edges, we want to round it, so we're gonna go ahead and pass a border radius here of 20 pixels. All right, so that looks good. Now the last thing I wanna go ahead and apply is going to be a simple box shadow, which I'm gonna copy and paste in here. All right, so that's our box shadow. It's gonna just make it stand out a little bit more from uh, the background here, okay? Now, we need to somehow get our circle here so that when we click it, it goes from left to right. Now, how we're gonna do that is by using the same way we target our, in our input here, but we're gonna be using the uh, before selector. Okay, so we can say our input, type a checkbox, and we're gonna say before. So we can use the before and after to enter 
uh, you know, elements, text, or anything you want without actually creating another div. So it's going to minimize your HTML. So if I simply go ahead and say content here and put this to an empty string, and now if you recall, we set the position to relative on our, our, our uh, if I can speak, our input here. So what I can do is I can say set this position and we can say, let's see here, why isn't it auto filling for me? I'm lazy, I don't wanna type. Uh, absolute there so we can set that to absolute now you're not going to see anything because once again we have and have not defined a width and height for this content here so if we say height and we're going to do 40 pixels for this demo and also a width of 40 pixels okay so you still don't see anything because right now the color by default is going to be white so let's go ahead and give this a background color and we're going to use 303030 Okay, and that's gonna generate this square here. So if we go to our inspect element here, I just kinda wanna show you how the before selector works if you're not familiar with it. So if you inspect this here, you, you'll see, you don't see this, but if I expand this input, you'll see this before selector, and here we have that content. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, we could've just went ahead and created another div, set that to position you know, relative, and then that absolute, and made it that way, but this is just a little bit of a cleaner way to uh, make something like this. So just wanted to kind of show you how that works. Now let's go ahead and minimize that back down. Okay, so what we wanna go ahead and do here is now we want to round the circle or the square right now to become a circle. So we're gonna go ahead and pass it a border radius and do 20 pixels. Now there's a few ways we can do this. Now, I want to enlarge the circle. So I could just hypothetically give it a, a larger height and width, but I want to use a special property here that we can actually use to enlarge our uh, circle here, which is going to be the transform and we can pass scale. Now the default value for scale is going to be one, but if we pass it just something a little bit larger, like 1.1, it's going to be just a little bit larger and it's going to kind of fill over the line here or going to fill over our background just a little bit. And I like that look a lot better. Now you could go smaller. You could do like a 0.9 and make something more inset like this if you want to. So you're more than you know welcome to change it however you want, but I just prefer the look of a little bit oversized button going back and forth, okay? Now, we also want to pass this a transition here to go ahead and make the animation, or I wouldn't say animation, this sliding from the left-hand side to the right a lot smoother. So what I'm going to do is say 0.7 seconds here, ease, and set that to all. Okay, and then just like we have our box shadow here, let me go ahead and close that down a little bit. I'm going to copy this box shadow onto our circle here, and you're going to see it's going to stand out just a little bit more, and you're really going to see it pop once we do the color change when you actually click on it. All right, so I think that about does it for our circle. Now, right now when we click on this, nothing's happening. So there's no indication that we're actually checking the checkbox because right now currently this is actually working. If we click on it, it's becoming checked. And if we unclick on it, it is becoming unchecked. But we're visually just not seeing that because we went ahead and turned off the ability to see the actual default behavior for this. Now, what we can do is we can actually target that check state once we click on this input because it still is an input at the end of the day where it is not showing the default you know, view of what it looks like. So what we can do is say input and we can do, or we can look for the checked and then we wanna say our type here. So we'll do our uh, brackets here, type equals check box and we want to also target the before here now if i go ahead and change the background color here to let's say white now when i click on this input value here we should see the circle change to white and we do okay so you can see now how that box shadow looks a lot better uh, when it's a white color all right so that's besides the fact now when we click on it, that's great to change color, but we never seen it slide to the right. So to do that, simply all we need to do is I'm gonna pass it a left value here, and we're gonna say 82 pixels. Now, if you make this any smaller or any larger, this value is probably not gonna work for you. This is configured for this width and this height. Well, I guess more of this width. The height doesn't have anything to do with it. So if we save that and we uh, we see the change happen, you can see that now once it is checked, the circle is gonna be on the right-hand side. Now, if I click this again, it's going to be unchecked. And what's going on here? So you can see, what did we do wrong? Because that wasn't a very smooth transition. 
Uh, let me see, transition, ease all. Let's see, it's going back and forth really quick. I may have forgot something along the way here. Let me check. Now the issue is that we forgot to actually define a left value here on our initial before selector for our checkbox. So it's just going back explicitly to the beginning. So I believe if we pass a left value of zero here, we should see this animate very smoothly like we had in our demo there. So that seemed to go ahead and fix it. So now once we click it, so right now it is currently not checked. And when we check it, there you go, you can go ahead and see that it is now visually checked, the circle turns white, it has a smooth you know, transition to the right, and then if we want to uncheck it, it'll go ahead and head back, and now the circle return back to the default color. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up here for this video and our animated toggle button. If you guys did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.